everybody, it's Greg from Park Journey here. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a good week, a uh, week after Thanksgiving, and got some stuff to talk about today. Um, Six Flags related. Uh, last week we did some Disney stuff. Today I'm going to kind of circle back on um, Six Flags, give a kind of a, a mini review of this year, which, spoiler alert, um, probably won't be great. Um, but one of the first things I want to talk about is um, the hours that just came out for Magic Mountain um, moving into next year. Um, so we'll get into that first, uh, Magic Mountain stuff, and then we'll kind of talk about Six Flags um, as a whole. Um, so before I get started, make sure you click below to subscribe to our channel. As always, it is greatly appreciated. Uh, so you may remember a couple years ago, um, Six Flags Magic Mountain went to a 365-day you know, basically open every day um, schedule. And the first time they've, they've actually ever done that. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Magic Mountain used to be closed basically during the off season. Um, and uh, it was basically from, you know, September to, you know, late March, early April. Um, they would only be open on weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then they would be closed Monday through Thursday, uh, and except for like holidays and stuff. And then they'd reopen for spring break for a couple weeks. Um, this is back when, you know, spring breaks used to kind of all be in the same, you know, time frame. Now it's, you know, every spring break is different. Um, and then they'd actually shut down again uh, during the week um, through uh, April. And then sometimes they'd open maybe a couple weeks before uh, Memorial Day. Um, they'd open for daily operations and those were the days that like you wanted to go to magic mountain during the week uh in early to mid may um you know you would have the park basically to yourself i remember uh, going in like 94 when batman had just opened um and we basically had the park to ourselves it rained a little bit and we must have ridden batman probably you know 20 times uh which was great uh because obviously you know brand new ride first of its kind or you know first of its kind on the west coast and it, you know, we could ride all we wanted. So that was basically how Magic Mountain operated for the first, what, 45 years um, or 35 or what, 72, see, I'm doing math in my head. Yeah, you know, 35, 40, 45 years. That's, that's how Magic Mountain operated. Um, and then somebody got the bright idea, hey, let's go to, you know, full, full year operations. So, you know, you're, you, when you think about it, uh, you know, if you had time, you know, days in the in late April, early May, mid May, in the past, where you know you would go to the park and maybe like 2,000, 2,500 people would be in the park, if that. Um, some days I remember going and there's like 1,200 people in the entire park. Um, you know, park's not making any money. I mean, basically, you know, you figure most of the people going are probably season pass holders. Um, you know, your park's not making a whole lot of money on those days. So then you kind of compound that, say, a Wednesday in January. Who's going to the park? The, there were days when Magic Mountain was open 365 days a year where there were maybe 500 people in the park. That is not sustainable. Um, I actually didn't think it was a great idea in the first place. Um, so I am not surprised that they've kind of rolled this back a little bit. Um, so basically what happened was after... October after Fright Fest, um, they started, uh, they didn't really announce it, to be honest with you. They just, um, you know, on the calendar, there were, you know, Monday uh, through Thursday was was closed after um, Fright Fest ended. Uh, so basically all of November and December. And then there's a couple of, uh, you know, Mondays in there for, for holidays. Um, and then obviously the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's, they're open every day, which was, was traditional. Um, they, they would always be open, you know, during that week. But I, in the past, even before they even had Holiday Park, you would go that week between Christmas and New Year's and the park would be even dead that week, um, which was always you know kind of surprising, to be honest. Um, and then so now, basically, uh, they've kind of even gone even further with with this. And um, in starting in January, they're only going to be open Saturdays and Sundays. So in the past, they would be open Friday, Saturdays and Sunday. And now a lot of the weekends, they're going to be open only on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, and then again, weekends um, are a little bit different. There are, um, you know, like uh, Martin Luther King weekend, President's weekend. Um, they are open, you know, Friday through Monday, I believe. And then, you know, starting in mid-March, um, they're open every day for spring break, uh, moving into April. Um, and then the calendar only goes to April right now. So we'll see what happens, you know, kind of, kind of um, beyond that. So part of me thinks that this, I mean, obviously I, I, I was not surprised when they started closing for days um, because it just wasn't sustainable. It was not a sustainable thing. 
Um, but on the other hand, how are you going to staff your park when you only have you're only open two days a week? Um, you know, people are you know looking for jobs. People need jobs, obviously. Um, a lot of you know ride ops and stuff at Magic Mountain are you know high school students, college students, um, you know looking for a part time job. Um, but you know, even if you had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're you know you're getting you know you could possibly get you know twenty four. You know, if you're working eight hour shifts every day, you're getting twenty four hours a week. That's a pretty good you know part time job. You know, if you're in high school or college and uh, maybe still living at home and you just need a part time job, that's that that's okay. That that's I think that's okay. But now you're talking. At the maximum, you're going to get 16 hours a week. Um, a lot of times, they're only scheduling you six hours a day, so you're talking 12 hours, you know, a, a, a week um, for Saturday and Sunday. That's not sustainable, and you're not going to have a whole lot of people wanting to to work, you know, only two days a week. Um, it's just it's just not something that's going to happen. And then on the other side of that, you've got you know your support staff. Um, you've got your maintenance. You've got your janitorial. You've got you know, your, your backstage, you've got, you know, all of these, um, people that, you know, previously were probably working full-time jobs. And now you've got, you know, two days a week. Um, you know, yes, there's things going on other days of the week where, you know, you're doing scheduled maintenance and you're doing your maintenance, but as far as, you know, prepping the rides every morning for, you know, opening, um, doing your daily tests, um, that's two days a week, right? So how is that going to, how are you as a, if you're a Six Flags maintenance person, how are you going to sustain that, you know, throughout the year? Now, to be fair, um, other Six Flags parks they're closed, you know, not even all they're they're not even open on the weekends for for a long period of time, and they they maintain a maintenance staff. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to kind of follow that kind of model, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens with um, the Six Flags staff. Uh, and then on, you know, and then just like I said, with with you know your ride ops, your food ops um you know it'll be interesting to see if they can retain any people you know hopefully they can um but you know there were some you know over the weekend uh last weekend there were reports that you know there was like three coasters open at at the park at like noon on i believe it was either saturday or sunday i posted some pictures of it um according to the app and then you know people were like well this has got to be wrong and a few people that i know that were at the park actually confirmed that that was true the only things were open were like x2 Twisted Colossus and West Coast Racers. Everything else was closed uh, or delayed open, or and that's just that's not that's not acceptable. To be honest with you, if I'm a you know I have a pass. I've had a pass at Magic Mountain for you know basically my entire life. Um, you know, for me, not that big of a deal. Um, you know, unless I'm going to I want to write, but you have people coming in and paying for you know a day at the park, and there's only three things open. That is not acceptable at all, um, and it, it's kind of, to be honest, kind of shameful to be, to be perfectly killer, clear. And again, I'm not just saying this because you know I want to say it. I have a very good relationship with Magic Mountain, um, but sometimes things just need to get said. Um, so yeah, so the, so so we'll see what happens there um, with with this. We'll, we'll see what happens with the hours starting in May if if they kind of come up a little bit um, and start opening more daily. Um, we will certainly let you know. Um, so that's, that's kind of the change here on, on Magic Mountain's hours. And I will say that a friend of ours went on Monday and apparently everything was, was pretty much open. So hopefully that was a fluke, um, as far as that's concerned. But again, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit worried about, you know, the maintenance staff and um, the ride maintenance staff, uh, moving forward with, with the, the, the huge reduction, um, in, in hours at the park. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So, you know, overall, um, not a good year for Six Flags, to be honest with you. Um, there's been a lot of calls for the uh, Six Flags CEO to step down. Um, I don't see that happening. I don't think his ego will allow that to happen. To be honest with you, um, he doesn't see he doesn't know this business. And and I'm to be honest, I'm kind of tired of seeing people elevated to leadership roles in theme parks, not just at Six Flags but across the board that have no experience and have no desire. To get to know this business, um, I, I don't pretend to know everything about this business, but I've been a fan of this business since I was, you know, ten years old. Uh, you know, and that's you know a lot of years. I'm not gonna, you know, they're what thirty seven years now. Um, so uh, you know, I, 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 I uh, we have a passion for this industry. These, the, the, a lot of these CEOs don't have a passion for for theme parks, and it shows. Um, and and they not only do they not have 
the the um, the history of it. But again, like I said, they don't they don't. It doesn't seem like he wants to learn about the theme park business. Um, he he's um, he's uh, using his past experience with other types of business to influence his decision here, and it's not the same kind of business um, at all. He doesn't understand the audience. I mean, he doesn't understand the clientele. Um, he doesn't, uh, and he doesn't seem to 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 want to to want to learn. So, um, that that's my big that's my big uh, issue with with Six Flags right now. Um, I'm giving the overall chain right now a D. I'm giving the CEO a D. Um, again, I was very excited to be honest with you. After I talked to them in in January, I was very excited about the future of Six Flags. To to the detriment, like people were like yelling at me that. Oh, you're, you know, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to give this guy a chance. Well, I gave him a chance and I'm done giving him a chance. So that's what it is. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, it had to go this way. Um, I, I would I would have loved, loved to have a year end wrap up for Six Flags and been talking about how great the, the, the parks are doing, how um, great attendance is and revenue and how much the parks are improving and yeah, look, uh, you, you know, they raised the prices on the parking, but look what's been happening to, you know, look at look at the improvements to the parking lot or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but that's just not the case. And I hate to I hate to be like that because I love Six Flags. I've been a fan of Six Flags for forever. Um, I grew up at Magic Mountain. I've never lived more than, you know, 50 miles away from Magic Mountain. Um, it's technically been my home park, my home park, you know, my entire life. Um and it kind of sucks, to, to be honest with you, to kind of see what's become of it um, and what's become of the entire chain. Um, I, I'm still keeping my pass because, I mean, I paid, what, like $8 a month for it or whatever. Um, you know, and I and I, and I I spend money in the park. When I go and I see things that I like, um, I, I'll buy them. Um, when I, I, you know, got the nano coasters and the, the parkscapes and, you know, uh, things like that. We buy food uh, when we go, when, when, you know, we feel like, you know, we want to eat in the park. But... I just I don't see um, I don't see I don't honestly see what's going to happen. I, I I can't tell you what's going to happen in the future. Um, I just don't see good things for for a lot of the parks. Um, you know, at this point, I I, I think I never would, I would have never said this, but I'm I'm kind of hoping they start selling off some of the parks. Um, I I've talked about you know them selling off some of the smaller parks. Honestly, I, I would love it if maybe they sold off Magic Mountain and Georgia. Um, and maybe Great Adventure, you know, I don't know. I know they're not going to. Um, they're just going to run them to the ground, and then there'll be houses in 10 years. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I, I, I um, this, this is, I, I'll be honest, this is the most down on Six Flags that I've ever been. Um, so that, that's what it is. Um, all right, everybody. Hate to hate hate to be negative, but uh, hope you enjoyed that a little bit. Um, like, if you have any comments, make sure you leave them below. Um, we will talk to you soon.